Hello everyone, it is I, Zybeguy. Often, game developers and game companies are criticized for using a certain game engine over another. And in some stupid circumstances, indie teams are criticized for using a game engine at all. Everyone talks bad about Unity, Godot and Game Maker, but talk brilliantly about Unreal, making your own engine, etc. Why? When did things go so wrong? Before we answer that question, let's take a brief look at history of game engines, and how they affected the games of that era. Actually, you know what, before I tell you about the history of game engines, let me just tell you quickly what a game engine even is, because I've seen a lot of people talk without knowing anything. A game engine is a set of tools that makes developers' lives easier. A simple game engine, usually as a rendering engine, a physics engine, a scripting engine, and usually some sort of editor. Engines like Unity, Unreal, Godot, and GameMaker are engines known by the industry as widespread engines. However, engines like Unity or Godot didn't exist back in the 80s or even the 90s. How were the developers making games without these engines? They didn't. There were no games in the 90s. They all lied to you. To be serious, they actually were still using game engines. These engines were either licensed from another company or created in-house. Let's take a look at a brief history of these engines. Doom. We've all heard of this game, either the 2016 reboot or the 1993 original. Since it is hard to believe that the new Doom was made in the 93 engine, we will take a look at the old one. How did its software assemble funny monsters in space to the masterpiece we all know and love? They created a game engine called idtech. Now, how did they make something like that in the 90s? Easy, uh... 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 An unstoppable force called John Carmack fell to the earth from the planet, said Strawberry Fedor and Nero. The master of bit manipulation descended his might upon us and blessed us with the engine that was truly ahead of its time. Later, this engine was further upgraded for use in Doom 2 and some other questionable Doom extensions. Because this engine was made in 1993, it obviously cannot be used to make games like this. Now, what engine do you think this was made in? A. Unity B. Godot C, a custom in-house engine, and D, Unreal Engine 2. You guessed it, it's of course the Doom 2 engine. Now this makes you think, perhaps the greatness of a game is based on how skilled the developer is and not based on the engine. Pah, <laughs> obviously not. The more you pay for an engine, the better the game you will make, obviously. Never mind, let's move on to the next step in our journey. There was one notable downside of it tech. It was not truly 3D. It was doing the old ray casting trick that you probably saw some madman do in console terminal. This problem was fixed by the Chad himself once again. John Carmack made the Quake engine. Now you might be thinking, whatever, it's just a better version of what they had. To be honest, if it was your guess, you'd probably be right. This was the problem, and this time another man decided to solve it. At that time, a small company named Valve was not known to anyone really. Gabe Newell knew that he would either make his debut game and announce to the world what a handsome guy he is, or either he will have to acknowledge the existence of the number 3. And the choice was obvious, but come on, who got a time to make a technological revolution? If he didn't have the force to do it, he had one thing for sure. Money! Kids, what do you do when you can't invent a technology but really want to have one? That's right! You buy it! So this is how the Gold Source engine was born, a heavily modified Quake engine, which is by itself a heavily modified version of it tech. This is what I call a circle of life. So anyways, you all know what was done with Gold Source and how it changed the industry forever. The point is, even though it still remained a proprietary game engine, it still did a good service. Games like Counter-Strike, Half-Life, Day of Defeat, Ricochet, were all done in Gold Source, until one day, Another technological revolution? Already? Anyways.
Source Engine, the engine to rule them all. It needs no introduction. It is a turning point where funny, blocky, polygonal men started to look like actual humans. Gold Source was no feat compared to the Source Engine, and boy did it deliver. Countless add ons, fan games, and so on, and so on. Despite still being closed source software, it could not stop the fans. Mods started appearing everywhere, the creativity outclothed anything that was out there. It is when the people realized the importance of game engines. With relatively small knowledge, they were able to make games graphically comparable to Half Life 2. Outrageous! And the developers knew it. Why else do you think they would make Half Life Lost Coast, which is literally a Source Engine demo that flatters the Source Engine itself? But at that time, nobody knew that something unreal was coming. I'm sorry for this cheap pun, but Unreal Engine was honestly unreal. Okay, okay, I see, I see, I won't do it again, okay? Please remove this steel pipe away from my face. <clears throat> unreal Engine 2 to be exact. While Valve was baiting in glory from mutilating the good old Gramps id tech to its limits, Epic Games wanted that sweet bite of market share too. Unfortunately for them, they did not have the money nor the crushing weight of our savior Gaben. So they had to go down the road that John Carmack already crossed before. It's unimaginable. They had to code. I know. I know, it's... it's surely terrifying. Don't worry too much, they stole a physics engine called Karma, which is... Was it worth it? Absolutely! After slowly but surely upgrading their engine from being a weaky gold source competitor to what it is known now, it smoothly brings us to the modern day. The age of general purpose engines that you can use. Well, actually, there was the series engine that was... Shut up! Shut up! Nobody cares about it. So here we are. To be honest, I've played a little trick on you. We will talk about Unity first. Because it got C sharp as a script. Unity is probably the game engine that you all know. Even if you wish you did it. It is THE engine used by a vast majority of the games being made today. Choose any modern game that is not made by some sort of big AAA company. I will bet that at least some of them are made with Unity. We don't know exactly when people came up with the idea for making general purpose game engines. But we probably know the reason. As with anything good in this world, the key is probably money. money. Unity offers a great toolset for any game you want to make, but wouldn't have the resources to assemble on your own. It has a nice renderer, buy OpenGL you little piece, an embedded scripting language, a sustainable physics engine to move wooden crates as much as you want and probably a dozen other technologies working under the hood. The same applies to newer versions of Unreal Engine, when the developers realize they can make real bucks from their engine. And tonight's best boy, Godot. They all work by the same principle, providing you with general toolsets for any crazy ideas you might have in your head. Sounds like a dream, huh? No, it's not. I know the answer. It is, as always, money. money. You, re you, <laughs> you really thought you would be served these tools free of charge? Of course not, don't be silly. The difference is how various game engines empty your wallet. On one side, we have Unity. It removes its boot-up logo, that's very infamous, and provides advanced features for those who are willing to pay. Not to mention, if your game gets successful, do you think the Unity team will cheer you up and say good job and pat you on the back? No. Oh boy, hide your wallet, they're coming for it. It is a regular practice to cut some percentage of your income to the tool providers that allowed you to make this money generator initially. On the other side, we have the Chad Unreal Engine. It charges you a percentage of your income, if your game makes any, that is. You ask, what's the catch? Oh. After this revelation, you might think, Man, screw it. Can I just make my own engine? Well, listen up, boy, I'll tell you what. You're no longer some soft developer that plays with plushies like Unity or Godot. You're stepping into the real world, into the minefield. You'd be blown away, believe me. It isn't some fun trip where you have fun, maggots. It is a wild run that stops only in case of emergency, and crying is not an emergency. You still want to make an engine, soldier? You've got some guts. 
the most reasonable language choice would be either C or C++. Accounting the speed, the efficiency... What about C? You will interface directly with the set of instructions your CPU got for you, using OpenGL or Vulkan. Thinking about a physics engine? <laughs> you won't be capable of thinking after reading 50 page articles on how collisions work. Take Havoc, Karma or any other game engine and they usually are easily integrated with your project. What's left? If it's a general purpose engine, the easy and small part is left. Don't worry. All you have to do is... Phew! What a ride, huh? Let us conclude what we have came through. Before I go on to pros and cons, I want to talk about some parts I like and dislike about some popular game engines. Unity. I love Unity. I make all my games with it, almost. The thing I love about Unity is it's so widely supported. If you get an error or you want to add something you don't know how to add, odds are someone has already made a blog post about it. The thing I don't like about Unity is... Unity, please don't send assassins after me. I, I like your engine a lot, there's just a couple of things I find annoying, okay? Unity often deprecates packages before the replacement one comes out of preview, which causes some issues with its compatibility. Now we have Unreal. Unreal Engine is pretty cool in my opinion. The thing I love about it is its blueprint system. It's so simple to make a game thanks to it and you can just use C++ if that's not your cup of tea. However, the thing I don't like about it is people thinking it's the only engine with good graphics. Unity can achieve good graphics as well. Godot can achieve good graphics as well. Speaking of Godot, I personally haven't used Godot a lot, I've tried it out a couple of times, and I didn't really understand how it works, it's probably due to my own stupidity however. Some people I know such as DevNugget use it to make their games and they make some pretty cool games so Godot must be pretty cool. The thing that people often dislike about Godot is that when a big update comes it usually breaks the code written in the old updates. For example, if you're trying to port your game from Godot 3 to Godot 4, good luck! You're gonna rewrite the whole thing. Let's go through with the pros and cons of commercial game engines. Pros. They are usually very easy to use. They don't have steep learning curves. You don't have to write them. And usually they have some way to just port your game to another platform with just one click. The cons, however, they are often bloated with things you don't need. Like if you're making a pixel art game, you don't need PBR graphic shaders. If you're making a realistic AAA game, you don't really need a pixel-perfect camera. They usually need you to sign up to free licenses that take a percentage of your income from the game you make with it. And some of them have a bad image due to bad games being made with them. If any of you remember the 2012 Slender Game craze, you know what I mean. People used to make Slender Games and usually they were made in Unity and usually they were very bad. Now that we have done that, let's go through the pros and cons of writing your own game engine. Pros. You have more control over everything. You don't have to wait for updates. You can add features whenever you want. And you don't need to pay for any licenses or no one will take any money from you when you release your game. But the cons are, if it lags or crashes or breaks or burns down your computer, it's your fault. It's very hard to make a game engine. Trust me, I've tried like five times and I'm barely getting it right. Making good graphics is very hard and very technical. Don't believe me? Just Google OpenGL PBR and you'll know what I mean. And finally, you don't even want to make a game after you're done with it. You're so bored of working on the same thing that you don't want to even use it to make a game. So it usually burns people out. So I think that's all. I want to thank my friend Beref for editing this video. Without him, this video would be in my draft for years. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments. Did I get anything wrong? Please let me know. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you want to discuss anything with the community, join my discord. I will see you all in the next video. Zaipkai out.